Welcome to another video from explainingcomputers.com. This time I'm going to talk about cloud computing. This is where data, software applications or computer processing power are accessed from a cloud of online resources. This permits individual users to access their data and applications from any device, as well as allowing organisations to reduce their capital costs by purchasing software and hardware as a utility service. Cloud computing is closely associated with Web 2.0. In particular, a key element of both trends is the emergence of online applications known as Software as a Service, or SAAS. Commercial Software as a Service includes Clarison's online project management tools, as well as customer relationship management and human resource applications offered by Salesforce, employees and Zoho. A number of online office applications are now also available and include Google Docs, Blist and SlideRocket. These allow anybody to create or upload documents into their online cloud and then to work on them using any kind of computing device with an internet connection. In addition to software as a service, cloud computing also includes the development of hardware as a service, or HSAS. This is where computer processing capacity is purchased over the web. Amazon, for example, now offer a web service called Elastic Compute Cloud, or EC2. This allows users to purchase computer processing power online and on the basis of the processor cores, storage and data transfer they require in each instance. Google has also launched a similar service called App Engine and which permits developers to run web applications on Google's infrastructure. Hardware as a service can offer many advantages. Amazon, for example, highlights how EC2 is elastic because it allows users to increase or decrease their hardware requirements within minutes. Flexible, because users can choose the specification of each individual instance of computing power purchased. Inexpensive, as no dedicated capital investment is required. And reliable, as EC2 makes use of Amazon's proven data centers and network infrastructure. The trend for cloud computing has been compared to the development of the electricity network a century ago. At that time, companies stopped having to produce their own power and instead plugged in to a national electricity grid. In the same way, individuals and organisations can now connect to a cloud of computing resources to fuel their information activities, rather than having to install software to run on their own hardware. It is therefore perhaps hardly surprising that cloud computing is also being referred to as utility computing. Linked to this trend, some new low-power, low-cost devices, such as the Asus EPC and the EverX Cloudbook, are also starting to be referred to as computing appliances. This is because they're intended to be used out of the box to access the emerging cloud of utility computing services with no user software installation being required. Cloud computing may signal a return to an age of centralization with data, applications and processing power largely remote from a user interface device. However, there are also significant differences from the previous mainframe era. For a start, Cloud computing is levelling the playing field by bringing the potential benefits of centralised resources to all sizes of business. Any company, and indeed any body, can now connect to software or hardware as an online utility. This means that fewer companies now have to invest in a large-scale computing infrastructure. In addition, over the next few years, fewer individual users will be tied to a particular device when they want to access their data and applications. In tandem with Web 2.0, 
Cloud computing has the potential to change the face of the entire computing industry. Amazon, Google, IBM and others have already embraced the cloud computing revolution. However, companies like Microsoft now face an increasing challenge if they want to continue to sell us software to run on local hardware. For more information on this topic, you might want to look at my video on explaining Web 2.0. But that's it for this time, and I hope to talk to you again very soon.